Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. We do. And today we will deal with a frustrating topic. Fakes and fraud on the second hand market. Everyone uh, knows that fake art is a big problem and many people have heard about uh, Han van Megeren and other famous art forgers. Um, and as a result of this, people who are interested in buying art are in generally careful and quite skeptical when it comes to authenticity. And the same thing can sadly not be said about people buying design furniture. And hopefully this video can be somewhat of an eye-opener for some of you. And let's start with an example to illustrate this problem. Back in 2014, I was working for the auction house Lauritz in Stockholm. Um, at the time, the clamshare by Arnold Madsen uh, was at this peak of its popularity and literally hundreds of these shares were sold by Lauritz alone. An established upholsterer and dealer started selling reupholstered clamshares wrapped in white sheepskin, a popular piece often seen on social media and interior magazines. Mm -hmm. Um, at, at first, uh, there were no problems. The shares sold were legit and they were professionally refurbished. Uh, but the sellers uh, continued selling more and more and more shares and after a while I got a bit skeptical. I decided to take a closer look at one of the shares, but it wasn't an easy task to do. The upholstery was obviously new, all wooden details were covered in shiny black paint and underneath the chair a white fabric prevented me from inspecting the wooden frame. Uh, I simply had no choice but tearing up a piece of the fabric and almost immediately it became obvious for me that not just the upholstery but actually the whole chair was completely new. Mm. The auction was taken down and I confronted the, the, the dealer who finally confessed to me that he and a couple of uh, colleagues had ordered a whole bunch of fake share frames uh, from a carpenter in uh, Poland and uh, then upholstered them with, with his sheepskin to make them look like old clam shares. Mm. Uh, legally, I couldn't do much about it. The seller never expressively promised that his shares were old and the copyright situation is... Yeah, really unclear when it comes to the clamshare. Mm. Um, I made sure not to sell any more fake clamshares, of course, but other auction houses continued selling them and they still pop up from time to time. So therefore, be aware if you're interested in buying a vintage clamshare, especially the ones with uh, black frame and sheepskin upholstery. Yeah. There are three different types of fakes to look out for when buying design furniture on the secondhand market. The first one is the most obvious type, the deliberate fakes, like the one you yeah. just told us yeah. about. Someone has made a replica of a classic piece of design and then made a lot of effort to mm. make it look old and genuine. Several layers of paint might have been added, wear and tear replicated, and sometimes mm -hmm. even labels and stamps are added as icing on the cake. Yeah. This is like when a forger adds a fake signature to a painting to make it appear as a Warhol or Dali mm. or something. Some of these fakes are really difficult mm. to spot, but there are some telltales to look out for. Mm. First of all, pay attention to the details. Yeah. Compare with a genuine piece and make sure all the details are there. Often the forger has made some small errors, making it possible to tell the difference. Take a look at this example. Here you can see a grasshopper lamp by the Swedish-American designer Greta Magnusson Grossman, claimed to be produced in the 50s by Bergbooms. At first glance it looks legit, but there are some obvious flaws with this lamp. The angle of the neck is a bit off, as is the size of the feet. Hmm. Inside the shade is stamped Bergbooms G33, but the letters are uneven and sloppy. This is in fact one of several fake grasshoppers produced in Sweden a couple of years ago by a design dealer known for forging design objects. And we could give you a whole list of furniture and lamps that have been forged. Here's a PK22 by Paul Kjærholm, of course, mm -hmm. claimed to be produced by Ekold Christensen, but actually just made in a small Swedish workshop. Mm -hmm. 
There's quite a few fake Shadholm pieces out on the market, often stamped with fake Ekhold logo type. Yeah. Here you can see a fake logo compared with a genuine one. Mm. And here's some other examples of Scandinavian design pieces often forged. Yeah. And then we have the unauthorized illegal reproductions. As you all know, design furniture are protected by copyright law uh, and only authorized manufacturers are allowed to produce them. In Europe, uh, most design furniture are automatically protected under copyright law as an artistic work. And for most pieces of artistic works, copyright lasts for the lifetime of the creator plus an additional 70 years. And this means that uh, lamps by Paul Henningsen are protected until the year 2037, furniture by Bruno Mattsson until 2058, and reproductions of chairs by Hans Wegner won't be allowed until 2077. Mm. But this hasn't stopped some unethical companies from producing reproductions way before that. Uh, one famous example was the company Designers Revolt, uh, who, so, uh, who sold a huge lot of unofficial design objects uh, for a fraction of their uh, original retail price. Here you can see some of their illegal fakes. Thousands of these uh, were sold until the company uh, finally was shut down by Swedish authorities in 2016 and two of the owners were sent to prison for copyright infringement. But a lot of these pieces are still out on the second hand market, often sold as genuine pieces. Luckily Designers Revolt is gone, but it's still easy to buy the fake design furniture directly from China and there is still a huge problem. And it's therefore extremely important to make sure who the manufacturer is when buying a piece of design. You should always ask yourself, why is this so cheap? Mm. Can it really be produced by an authorized manufacturer? Now we've been talking about relatively recent mm. copies, but design furniture were copied already back in the days. We found an interesting article in a 1957 issue of the Vancouver Sun with the headline Piracy of Designs Seen in Furniture. Paul Hansen, the son of cabinet maker Johannes Hansen, is interviewed in the article and he explains that furniture by Hans Wegner are being copied all over the world. In the article one could read Possibly the most famous piece of Wegner's cowhorn chair, designed in teak and rattan. And this is one piece of Danish furniture that has been copied with variations all over the world, according to Mr. Hansen. He recently saw copies of it in a fabulous home in Dallas, Texas. They had been sold to the owners as originals. Important to learn from this is that design was copied already in the mm. 50s and 60s. Just because a piece is old doesn't mean it's an original. No. You must still make sure it's produced by an official manufacturer. Yes, and they are really hard to spot because the patina can be great on these old yeah. chairs, but still they are fakes. Mm. And finally, we have the third type of fakes to avoid when buying vintage design furniture, the lookalikes. This is a really problematic type of fakes, difficult to avoid and almost impossible to stop. 
uh, here someone has created something similar to a famous piece of furniture. Uh, let's take a look at an example recently sold by the auction house Wright in Chicago. Last November, they sold a large cabinet said to be produced in Sweden in the 1930s. The leather-covered doors had decorative rivets uh, that created a playful pattern of animals and people. But some of you might recognize this pattern. It's the Paradiset or Paradise uh, by the Swedish artist Gunnar Erik Ström, uh, sometimes used by Otto Schulz uh, when decorating his sort of the cabinets designed for Boet. But the cabinet sold by Wright wasn't designed by Schulz, and nor did it originally look like this. If you're interested in Swedish design, you've probably seen it before. It's a neoclassical cabinet produced by the small manufacturer Reiner, often with wooden inlays on the doors. Um, it's obvious that someone had bought a Reiner's cabinet and then applied leather and rivets uh, to the doors in an effort to make it look like a cabinet by Otto Schulz. And the big question is, did the experts at Wright realize this when accepting, accepting it for auction? Uh, and I think they did. Uh, but at least they should have realized it. But it's not mentioned with a single word that the cabinet has been uh, severely altered and the leather is recently applied. Um, it's not an illegal reproduction because Schulz never produced a cabinet like this. Still, it's obvious that the seller wants us to believe that it is one of his designs. Mm. Um, it's highly unethical to sell these kind of lookalikes, but they're almost impossible to stop because they're not illegal. Mm. And this was some things to be aware of when buying vintage design objects and hope we didn't scare you. We, we just want everyone to be aware of all the fakes out there. Yeah, yeah. And have you ever been tricked or almost tricked uh, to buy fake designs? Let us know in the comments below. It will be interesting to hear. Yeah, really. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.